Phil Parkin takes on Stevie Dempsey. This is Phil Parkin's second match of the day. He came through his preliminary round match against Paul Clack. Stevie Dempsey is the seeded player. Straight into the action. Mark Shepard with you for this one as we watch this race to seven. 50 minute match clock as ever. player stand is not actually too late tonight this is considered to be later than it was meant to be scheduled but actually we had a reasonably early finish otherwise planned then the action will kick off again tomorrow morning 10 o'clock the last 32 begins Sean Storr has just stepped into the commentary box to join me good, good evening evening Mark and evening everyone at home I'm trying to work out how to use a microphone Getting to that time of night. <laughs> yeah. Obviously all eyes on Stevie Dempsey to see how much of last season he can repeat. He had one of those seasons that you, you kind of feel you, you couldn't do it again if you tried, but he'll obviously be keen to. You just feel Tom and Stevie and uh, Chris Melling, they've kind of, yeah, they've not, this wasn't the first year they've done it, was it really? Tom, Tom to be fair, started late. He just won the last event of um, his first year on tour, which was Altman Paul's second year. But then obviously had the best season anyone's had last year. Um, Stevie had two good years in a row and Chris has had three good years, to be fair. So it's no surprise. I'll, I'll, you know, I will be surprised to see Stevie finish number one, to be honest, this year. It's, it, you know, it's probably between the three of those. Someone really needs to catch up with the amount of ranking points. Those three kind of put themselves clear of the pack. Um, and for good reason, you know, they're playing great pool. Stevie does have a much bigger break than, uh, than you realise. So he's kind of got the all-round package which you'd expect for you know, all three of those guys have got the all-round package they know exactly what shot to play they've all got big breaks uh, great under pressure it was some season he had you'd have to say of the three of them he probably outperformed the expected level by more but he's now so firmly established as a top player everyone's got sky high expectations coming into this year Stevie Dempsey got into an amateur tournament <laughs> A couple of years ago, <laughs> he did win it. Shock. It was about £12,000 to the winner as well. It's always the problem with any kind of handicap pool tournament where there's any entry requirements. You always get somebody that's too good. <laughs> I don't know how he got in that one. Yeah, I don't think amateur is ever a description. You could maybe have argued he wasn't necessarily seen as a top three player before last season, <laughs> but he was definitely seen as a, a top 20 player. Yeah, it's opened a club up as well. Um, so I don't know if that will help his game or not. But it'll be around Paul Moore. I know they don't have these cloths, um, which may or may not help. It might be interesting to see how he gets on. If he hasn't had any time on this cloth since uh, maybe December time, which was probably the last time he was playing on the Strachan Superfine. It does play a little bit different to some of the other cloths available. Yeah, that's one of the things that's hardest to simulate. Obviously, all of these guys are getting, getting plenty of match practice, but the table does play very differently. It's just another thing you notice with these, these top guys. They just seem to adjust so quickly as well, or they play, play the game in a way that they're not having to rely on dancing the cue ball around the table. They've got, they're playing to big areas. They find more margin for error than other players. All three of those guys do, you know missed three balls out unfortunately and I was, I was in good position as well just a tricky ball off the cushion to the middle to dr drift down the table but not that you remember these things he, that's effortless he's probably yeah I mean it's an effortless break doesn't look as powerful as it actually is but uh, yeah hardly looked like he touched that did he but actually if you'd measured the speed into that it's really smashed them yeah we did we did that we did that experiment at Clash of the Titans we were measuring a few breaks and he's kind of like can hit it 20 25 mile an hour pretty easy which is very hard you know that's kind of yeah I was watching it. Uh, Brian Halco six up on Chris Milley. I was watching it to 4-0 and it was all off the break so Chris hadn't actually touched the table apart from two dry breaks but now 6-0 in the time I've come downstairs to commentate so I imagine that's another two off the break to be honest I doubt Chris has actually had a shot in that match just on how quick it's gone didn't start long before this one. No, and in fact we moved this one because we assumed that one was going to take longer. We 
had we known it was going to be 6 0, we could probably have waited. Yeah. But still, still could go 7 6 yet. I mean, never write Chris Melling off. No, that's definitely a surprise result. Not taking anything away from Brian, but. Well, if he hasn't given Chris a shot, it's not a surprise, but. Well, yeah, it is, but it isn't, if you know what I mean. It's a surprise Chris hasn't had a shot, but sometimes that happens in this game. Tom Cousins lost in a six right earlier, so of the top three players, it looks like Stevie Dempsey is currently in pole position to start the season off best. Great shot there. Many people wouldn't have necessarily done that, but that was the right shot to just attack these two tricky balls. Landed perfect. Just uh, He was dead straight on that last yellow, just cheated the pocket a little bit just to come up here. I'm not sure how accessible that eight ball is. It looks like it goes bottom left but it's tight, it's the easiest pocket to kind of put it in. If you place it in the bottom right, there's a red guarding that angle, as you can see, to the top left of it. And it also goes to the top right corner as well. So I think you leave the yellow to the bottom right till the last, which makes me think he's going to play the eight ball in the same pocket. Just, just don't want to over hit it. Yeah, so he's looking to be about there, two cushions, just kind of land level with the eight ball to the left of it and cut it in. can go wrong this especially if you don't know the table you see that's as high as he can go but that's your kind of boundary line where he just put his cue there so he doesn't want to go past that point otherwise he would be snookered the tough risk reward calculation you, you leave yourself short guarantee a shot but it's a more difficult one or you play for the easier shot but bring in the traffic personally I'm playing this with loads of right hand spin as he's looking at it and just tracking hitting the cushion just below my aim point and not coming far off the cushion but use the use the spin to create the line see there hit low that's exactly how I play it yeah he couldn't hit that much better he's absolutely perfect didn't take too much risk but it's left a very manageable shot yeah and that is the kind of shot that can catch you out if you haven't played much on the table because can zip off the cushions, but we're seeing good touch already. That's why you play it like that, though. That kind of mitigates the table. Um, playing it that way, you take all the judgment out of it. The spin does all the work for you. He seems to win the big events as well. He won the um, Grand Slam when he did that year. Year one, I think, was that? Or year two? Year two. Well, that was double prize money, so... Um, it's like winning two events, really, or, or a double weekend, which obviously Shane Thompson and Tom Cousins are the only people to have done so far. Yeah, way back at the beginning of the 2022 season, beat Craig Waddingham 6-5 in that final. That was a big event, wasn't it, as you say? They'd kind of combined two together. That was in the earlier days of Ultimate Pool, where everything was kind of growing and growing, and at the time that was pretty much the biggest event that had been held. It's still the biggest prize money they've paid out. 14000 to the winner, that was. Obviously, they are a bit, a bit fair with the prize money. They do distribute it out better than kind of pools ever had. You know, you win, win your first match as a seeded player, you're on £250, which, you know, still only covers your entry fee, but um, it's still better than it ever has been. Obviously, if you're in, in, in one of the qualifiers, there's only 11 now, isn't there? I think, is there 76 on tour this year or 75? I know they want to try and get down to 64, ideally. If you're in the prelim, you've got to win two matches for that. But um, it's as good as it's ever been. You'd quite often have to get to a quarter final previously to win that sort of money. So, um, and there'd often be 200 people in the tournament. So, yeah, and two opportunities, of course, each weekend. Pro Series one and two this weekend. The other place there's some really good prize money now is in the Challenger division, split into tiers one and two this year. Well over 300 people playing across those two tiers. How um how much is that there? Because I haven't looked at the prize money for that, but I'd be interested to know. Yeah, I don't know the final number either. It was it was seven seven thousand the winner last year. Six yes, but well that was clumped into one. So yeah. I imagine they might make it five thousand tier one and I don't know two thousand tier two. I guess I don't know two or three. There are more players in total as well this year. They've expanded the field. Have they? Two eighty eight wasn't it last time? They've gone over three hundred, have they? Yeah, I think there's. Yeah, 160 or something in tier one, and that would be more like 190. So, yeah, I think they're, they're well over oh, 300 now. Phil, what's he done there? He's tried to play a cannon, but I don't think he needed to play the cannon. Or maybe he's tried to graze past that yellow, but he's just got a tiny little edge of 
edge of the yellow there and it's put them out of position. I mean, it, again, it's just the table does play different. It skids and it's first, his first visit to the table. So you can see a bit of magic here. He's trying to come. What's he trying to do? I don't know. He's got to try and make this somewhere. I think he was trying to make that in the right centre. But, I mean, if he didn't make it, it Stevie's going to clear these much more often than he isn't. So, I'll probably write the frame off there. Or if you do come back to the table, you're probably going to be in a lot of trouble. Yeah, that's that kind of unforced error you've got to cut out against these top players. Stevie's going to make enough chances of his own without you helping him. Stevie's just pulled a face there. He wanted to just travel a little bit further so he could pot the yellow to the right centre. It's not, it must be blocked slightly to the bottom right corner. So it's, He's got two tricky yellows to deal with, the one on the left cushion and then the one on the right. Just need a little bit of attention. Plenty of options for them, but just need to take care. Is he going top left now? Little test to cue in. A lot of bottom right hand side on this. You can see where he's aiming on the cue ball there. Really low and to the right. Just one cushion here. Yeah, lovely. Yeah, you were saying earlier about his ability to pull out single pressure pots. He's shown that time and time again. Like difficult shots like that, which obviously very makeable, but he's making them every time. That's the key thing. Yeah. It's tough to do. He's really ele elevated his game. I don't know what he's done to actually elevate his game or if he feels he's done that, but um, I haven't had the full full chat with him about why he's you know, kind of jumped from being, like you say, a top 20, top 16 player to a top four player or number two, you know, however you want to look at that. Very nearly number one, to be fair. Yeah, I mean, how he had that season and wasn't number one, I mean, it, the answer was just because Tom was so remarkably oh, good. Just rolled off. I had one roll off earlier as well, away from the cushions. That's what, exactly what happened to me. Except I was, I was with the cue ball full length of the table and I just sat and watched it turn. Oh, it's a shame. Yeah, and a crucial chance for Phil now that he wasn't expecting to get. Lovely shot, lovely shot. But that's, this is where Stevie's done nothing wrong there. It's middle of the pot, and it's still on the table. I'm hearing because it's a new cloth, it's potentially glue. I mean, they, we had this reset, hit a good break, and forget it happened. Yeah, certainly much easier to see the funny side when you're ahead in the match. Let's have another look at this Stevie break. It's very relaxed, but very powerful. A little silent assassin, this is. Yes, it's very controlled, isn't it? It's not throwing his body, it just smoothly moves his arm through it and just generates so much pace. He's long, though. He's, the, the pace is actually from the break. It's either you try and snap and use your wrist and body and everything and kind of keep it a bit more compact where it looks a bit crazy, or I find you get more power doing what Stevie does. So if you look at where he places the cue ball, uh, it's at quite an angle, so that, that cue can come back a long, long way to his bridge hand. And... Um, that's what he does. He pulls the cue all the way back, and then just he's got time for that cue to accelerate. And yeah, he, that's how he generates all his power. There's no body, but it's all timing and just having a really long bridge hand. The difficulty of having a long bridge hand, though, is of course it's very hard to then hit the middle of the cue ball. He did have a bit of side on that, but um, still, still controlled it to the top cushion, which is what you're trying to do. And let's give himself a great chance to forget about that roll off in the last frame. Oh, it's gone wrong though. Trying to cannon there, he's just put that yellow thick. He's trying to cannon the yellow next to the eight ball. Um, yeah, misjudged it completely. Probably the long plant now, unless he can find a safety. This plant is not easy if he takes it on. One of those ones that makes you look a bit silly when you miss that cannon. It's seem wildly out of position now. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's just, he's just trying to cut the one down the road. I mean, it's just as difficult, but this is probably. If he doesn't play it hard, it's going to roll off again. It's in that kind of region. Don't really play in this dead weight. Oh, it's, it's fine. It's just again, that's <laughs> the option of the plant. Yeah, could have done with bumping into that yellow or flicking past it. Then this is 
Still not an easy shot, although at least he's closer to the plant this time. It's definitely easier than it was. Again, he's going to try and probably hold for that ball on the cushion. That's, that's the thing that makes it difficult. You can't, you're always going to miss it to that jaw if you missed it, is what I was going to say. Miss, miss it thin, if you like, trying to hold the cue ball, but he's played it perfectly. Yeah, that shot looked like nothing, but you want to try playing that. That's a very difficult shot. He's actually taken these really well, because once he missed that cannon, he was in a bit of bother. Looks like he's back in prime position now. This is something he just does so well, though. The power of recovery and not beating himself up. You won't see him really show any emotion out there. Very little. And he just gets on with it when he does make a mistake or something happens. You know, this has been a very good finish. Many people would have still been seething from the last frame and made a mistake here. Yeah, he just seems to have the mental game in a very good place. A light-hearted guy off the table, but on the table just looks very focused. So, behind again by two frames. Phil Parkin with a chance to get one of those back. That's a brilliant break. He can have one of those breaks that goes sideways, Phil, quite a bit. I know we all can, but I've seen Phil have, have days where he's going left, right, left, right of the centre line, but absolutely plumb down the middle of that one. Lots of power. Yeah, I mean, it's exactly what you were saying. It's kind of the contrast there. He was putting much more body into it, which is why sometimes you can slip offline. But that time, absolutely middled it. Yeah, he's always had plenty of power. It's just whether he... Yeah, you can only, you only have to be a fraction out and the cue was heading towards the middle pocket, you know, and that, that is when, when Phil hits it wrong, that's where it goes, whereas... Does mine might have rolled off or... It's one of those shots you can miss. Yeah, I think was he maybe just playing it with a trace of side to get past the first yellow. It's like he was digging down on it slightly. Mm. The yellows are obviously all in pretty nice spots had he been able to negotiate that one. It's just the eight ball. I know, I think it definitely goes right centre, but does it go bottom left? I think it goes bottom left. It makes the finish pretty nice. I mean, I think we'll be playing this one along the rail first with the big pocket. And then it just depends where the eight ball goes, really. Lots of right-hand side on this, probably, just to fizz down the table. No, he's just played it plain ball. Fair enough. As you say, all the balls have a clear pocket, apart from the eight ball being a bit congested. These are the sort of, you know... Not that we want to put a cursor on him, but you just don't see Steven missing these ever. This is just these finishes where you've just got to be a bit careful. He just he's just very good roots, and you very rarely see him make a silly mistake. And that so often is the difference between the top players. It's not always the big finishes. It's just getting close to 100% of the easy and medium difficulty ones. You do feel like they get more of the big finishes as well, though. Those are the ones everyone likes to see. <laughs> yeah. Sometimes, of course, it's the better you play, the less of the big finishes you're going for because you're always in good position. He needs this eight ball to go bottom left, otherwise it's very tricky. This is very tricky with the three balls he's got remaining. Where, where he is now, it's be very hard to get into that bottom left corner of the table with the cue ball for the eight ball last into the right centre. So if he, if he is planning on that which I think he is, he's got to get very straight on this yellow next to the bottom left. And these are hard to judge. Um, yeah, this, this could get away from him. Lots of side. I think that's good enough. That's a very good shot. Very, very good shot. Yeah, playing with a, a load of side. Because when you first keyed that, you thought he hit it way too hard and then just checked up off the cushion. Very clever shot. I mean, I think he's got to put a little bit of right hand side on this, but he's fine. Very, very good shot, that. Much better than it looked. It's almost like one of those. Um, oh, he's under hit this, though. I don't think he's there. I think he's got a double. He just, just comes slightly too high. And I said he needed to use some right hand side, but just where the cross so new, it's just not, not reacting with that check side. It doesn't add the extra pace on that it should. Uh, he has got a double here, so watch out for the left centre. Just got to move move that red with the cue ball. That will go up the table. Cue ball will stay down here. And in goes the double. What a shot. What a shot from Stevie Dempsey to finish that finish off. 
Yeah, I mean, today sort of served as a bit of a preliminary day. We play down to the last 32. This is one of only two matches to finish. We'll have our 32 set and then they'll come back at 10 o'clock tomorrow morning. So, not quite the usual service there. The cue ball finding the top left corner. This is really where Phil's got to get going. Can't have Stevie getting four frames ahead. Needs to get back in this one. Yeah. A little bit of um, stuff to work out. Yellows or reds, I think. I'd prefer the reds if that one by the eight ball goes bottom left. Which I'm not sure it does. I think it goes to some sort of pocket. Well, no, you've got to watch out for if he's playing this long. I don't think he's playing to the middle. It's all right. So just the yellow and the eight ball to work out there. He's trying to try to leave the angle here. So he can go one cushion. Not guaranteed to come out okay. He's kind of a little bit straighter than he wanted to as well. So he's got to force this a bit. It's not a natural angle. If he's going into sided against it. Not really yellow. So if this yellow closest to the cue ball now goes bottom left through the other two, then he's fine. It's a nice, a nice uh, way to go into this. Should be on a ball after. Might just play with a little tickle of uh, right hand side just to thin the angle, but he's just going straight in. It's absolutely fine. Very controlled. That was a perfect route, as you say, into that group. The yellow was always coming out. The only thing that could have gone wrong was the eight ball getting tied up, but that's sprung right into the middle of the table as well. A bit thin here. He might use the reds. He's put just. Just give himself something to do. I think I think it's a natural angle, just kind of that red full ball. He did look to the heavens for a second though. Taking these pretty well so far. I don't know if he's just gonna screw through the gap of the yeah. That, that gap, very nice shot. Lots of left hand side. Watch the cue ball. <laughs> yeah, that would have been a careless one to end up in the corner. But yeah, it's only an eighth of an inch difference, but the, the different weight of the ball and the different throw off it. Like, and yeah, I mean, as you say, if you've optimized for a cue tip of one size, in theory, you'd need to change that. I'd definitely be changing. I'll ch I change anyway, half the time. Been for a few cues, unfortunately, the last couple of years. Going with the Sean Murphy approach. You bring multiple ones to a match? No, not to a match. No. I, I, I was torn between two cues this week, to be fair, though. But um, yeah, it's just one of those one of those things. You playing with different tip size or just, just no it's the same they just still play differently this is just a crazy thing you know there's just one particular shot with one cue the cue that was made for me where it just froze completely differently to where I expect and it's just one you know little adjustments you can make the adjustment but I'm missing it by so far and it's not like a you know it's just when you're playing across the ball with kind of reverse side it's just throwing so wide and I'm missing it thin and it's like beyond the point where I'd be comfortable adjusting you know I could adjust obviously but it, there's too many shots where you think, well, now how much do I have to adjust for this shot? It just gets in your head. So it's really strange. It's a lovely cue and great feel and everything made made brilliantly. Just uh, you can never explain it. But I suppose you're working with a natural material and you never explain it. it. Might maybe thinning a quarter of a mil, half a mil off might help, but then it's going to change how it throws. It throws great for everything else. So it's very strange. Yeah, I can't explain it. You're also a bit committed to that. You take a bit off the size, it's not easily put back on again. No, exactly. Yeah, there's no point doing that work. Might as well start sell the cues. It might suit someone else greatly. You know, the cues perfect. So um, let someone else have a go with that and maybe start again. I mean, the cue I've got now, I say it's same cue maker, Carl Crack. You know, one of my sponsors. It's it's great. As long as only one of his cheaper range um, seems seems to react exactly how I want. So I'm fine using that. Well, the news from the main table, Brian Halcrow has completed the victory over Chris Melling. 7-2 in the end. I doubt Chris had many more than two visits. Fair play to Brian. Yeah, brilliant result for him. But he's already beat Chris once before as well on tour. So um, I think he's beat everyone on tour buzzer. He's, you know, very, very dangerous player, especially when he's 
break dishing for fun, which is what it looked like before. You know, I was watching that game before I came down to uh, share the commentary box with you now. I think he's grown as well in performance the last couple of years. I mean, he's been super enthusiastic from the start and was always a very committed pro. All the power comes from just time driving this cue through. Look, right, but it comes back past the cushion. It's easy power. Yeah, it's easy power and difficult to do it. It's a bit like when you watch Chris Mellie, you think, oh, he's getting so much spin on this, maybe I should just draw the cue back further. But it's the keeping control over it when you do that. You can see there again, though, he did hit a fraction of side on. I mean, he's be breaking with his playing cue as well, to be fair. But it must be a good cue. That's something that's really changed in the last few years. I mean, if you rewound five or ten years, you'd find pretty much everyone breaking with the same cue. But it's become very much the trend now to have a separate cue. I mean, as much for the characteristics of the cue, but also just to protect your playing cue. Yeah, I mean, you can do a lot more with a softer tip it doesn't tend to help you on the break and, and also even if you can break with a with a, you know a softer playing tip on the cue it goes hard very quickly if you're breaking with it all the time so um, I prefer to use a break cue but you know, most, most people on tour do to be fair there's, there's very few that break with their playing cue nowadays By the way, Stephen will be happy he's made a ball. He's got a decent chance here. He's now on potentially the most difficult one above the eight ball. So he needs to get a key ball through for the one on the right hand side. Yeah, it was a very good first shot. He was, he was very tempted to play the one to the top left, which was very thin, and he was losing the cue ball. And uh, in the end, he uh, negotiated the bottom left corner well, although he didn't negotiate that well. I think he's okay, though. Oh, he's going to swerve this. He's sort of giving it the, giving it the shrug shoulders and the little head shake. But I fancy him to get this. I just don't think he's going to be good on his next ball. I think he's going to be quite thin. He might even have to play the one to the bottom right next rather than the left middle. I fancy him to get this. For all the drama he's created. Oh, and he's just got it so thin that it's helped him. He's actually only just made that, but that's actually helped him a lot. Yeah, again, we saw the big long action as he delivered that. He'd be pretty happy with that outcome. Yeah, that's amazing. The cue, you, if someone told you to play that shot and get the cue with it, you say no chance. But he's just lit, just because he said it's so thin and the cloth's so new, it's kind of um, the check side hasn't had to kick in at all then in the end. So much left hand spin on it, but yeah, amazing. Yeah, it was ideal because it was spin he didn't want for any other reason than to swerve the cue ball. As you say, never didn't really take off the cushion, so it was fine in the end. I think he's going to play this with top right as well, two cushions. And, and again, it's hard to, depending on how straight he is, it's hard to miss the yellow if he's going that way. I don't, I don't see another way here. Top right, two cushions, hard to miss the yellow after the cushion because of the pace he needs to play this at. He's got to pot this thick. Oh, he's gone up. I, mean, I don't like that. I didn't like that. But... I don't know if he's trying to land short or past, but I don't fancy him to get this one. No, you didn't like it, and he didn't like the, the outcome. In all honesty, the shot I was suggesting probably wasn't on, so, but, you know. Um, it, the shot he played was fine, but I don't know. I imagine he was trying to land directly above the eight ball in a straight line, and he's obviously just maybe come six, eight inches too far to the left. So tension all pockets, he's going to be hitting this very hard. Wait, oh, that's close. Oh, a bit thinner off the yellow. That was in. And uh, he's not managed to mess the yellows up at all, so uh, I imagine we'll be looking at four each in the next minute and a half. This is just lovely for Phil. What a great position to come back to at the table. The ball's spread around, most of them near pocket. Yeah, it's delightful. And, um, just it doesn't matter who you are, how good you are. I know these top, top players do get those tricky finishes a lot, but when you keep getting tricky layouts, and it's a table you're not used to, you know, it's very hard to keep getting finish after finish. There's always a bit of risk there. But yeah, this is the dream scenario for Phil and he's got himself right back in this match from 4-1 down. Yeah, we're effectively going to go again. We're just over half the match clock's down. Looks for all the world like we're going to be tied at four apiece. 
no chance of a six red. The pace they're going at, unless we have one of those frames. Did you see the frame with? Um, oh, I think I was talking to you when it was happening, wasn't I? With Tom and um, Jez earlier, where the, the eight ball goes over the pocket off the break, and then a yellow and a red go near it, and you end up tippy tapping for ten minutes. Yeah, it was a strange match, all and all that one, wasn't it? Very much so. Yeah, Tom will be disappointed. I mean, the six reds were the funniest things I've seen. His six red, bless him. Yeah. Uh, yeah, good on him. And Tom, Tom is obviously that's what I was talking about with Phil's break. <laughs> it's funny, isn't it? Middles one, and then literally goes sideways on the next one. Yeah, I think to an extent that's Phil's game all over, isn't it? You can look a million dollars when you watch him uh, for a few frames, and then can just throw in a loose one. He has, to be fair, definitely worked on that though. I think a couple of seasons ago, you'd, you'd definitely see a lot more erratic stuff. Actually, since he's joined the pro ranks, he's. Had some good results, and for the most part, he's looked pretty steady. Yeah, he's, he's a uh, very good player, very natural. So he normally plays very quick, and uh, yeah, when he's on, he's very tough to beat. As Stevie's finding out. Given how this match started, Stevie's not really going to believe that he's at four all. I mean, he obviously knows that at this level. Didn't take a lot to get to that, but it looked to be in absolute control at the beginning of the match. This is definitely a strength of his, though. There's some players in this position, when their opponents got back into it, are sitting in the chair shaking their heads, but that's not Stevie at all. He's just going to get on with business. Yeah, definitely. Just... Uh close to a machine as you can get in in this game really just so consistent imagine he's going to leave the ball next to the the yellow next to the eight ball till last and just move the red above the eight ball out the way play the eight ball in the same pocket as the yellow both both those last two balls are going the bottom right would be my plan here Top, top right, come down towards the cue ball somewhere around the right centre pocket. Next shot, and then just yeah, drop in, leave it where he's leaving it. I don't, I don't know. To be fair, can he can he screw the red out of the way nicely, or does he? You want to be quite straight on the yellow if, if you're moving the red. If you end up with too much anger, you're probably better off just going into the red and the eight ball and moving them both. Yeah, the fact that he's giving it this much thought, you can see. That's what he's analysing as well. It's not a natural, yeah, it's not um You're either gonna need to be perfect on it and play the skillful way or you're gonna have to be just on it with an angle and Oh and see because he's because he's that's so rare for Stevie to do that. Because he's thinking just about the cannon, he's forgot to pot the ball. Yeah, it's a shot that's unmissable, as you say. He's two shots ahead of what's happening after that and it's caused him to miss a ball. I can't even think when I last saw him miss a ball like that. Oh. I mean, what? He must have had a real plan because he's tried to. The natural angle for that cube was to land very close to the right middle, and may, maybe he didn't want to be. He wanted to be able to do something with the cube, so he's tried to kind of force the cube ball out a bit, but it didn't feel like he needed to do that. He just needed to get straight on yellow to left centre. This isn't a good shot. He got away with it. It could have gone very wrong. Um, but yeah, that's unusual for Stevie. Everyone seems to think these first rounds are dangerous, especially for the seeds. Well, yeah, that's the trouble because it's Stevie's first match, but Phil has already been out playing this afternoon, so he's going to be the more warmed up of the two. I think that does depend if you played on the outside of it. Well, that shot tells me the red goes to top right, which it doesn't really look like it does on the screen. But yeah, I mean, the outside tables are... They did have two of these extra match tables of the five outside pro tables, but now all five of those outside pro tables are just supreme winners. So um, I don't know how much it helps. They're definitely playing slower as well on the outer arena. It's one of those utterly mystifying things, how the main arena tables always seem to play quicker. It used to be in days gone by, you'd have hot lights above the table, which did it. You don't really have that so much with LED lights. No, I don't know what it is. It's 
just got to nip this one. Natural. It's quite hard to avoid that yellow nearest the red. But, um, I mean, he doesn't need to avoid it. He can can net as long as it doesn't snooker him. But he would be can net towards the eight ball. So better to just screw across. I think he can just about nip it. Yeah. And the work is done. Probably just keep it simple. Play the eight ball to left centre. No point getting crazy here. Quite an intriguing match now. See Stevie starts as the favourite, but 5-4 up, that's kind of levelled it. That's like handicapping the match, I guess you'd say. Play all day to a final, but... Yeah, play all day to a final, and then of course the second tournament's also starting tomorrow, so there's going to have to be some scheduling for those that are going deep to make sure they're not meant to be in two places at once. What a break that is, by the way. Just so good. It looks like he's just played a stun shot and he's absolutely <laughs> ripped into them. Ball's flying everywhere. Yeah, you can see how he got the nickname, the hammer. They've clustered back up to be unlucky. To. A couple of those balls have gone all the way around the table and back into the triangle area, but um, still got enough room to work. But again, it's just another fiddly finish. And when you just keep getting kind of one fiddly little finish after another. I don't know if you can play this. No, I was just going reds. I was looking at the yellows, but actually, yeah, reds are pretty good. If you can pick the gap in two shots time, play the one over the hole next. He just wants to find the gap between the yellow and the red, or, f or glance off the red, maybe, nearest this one he's playing. Just in that gap, and then those other two go to the left middle, and then that opens everything up. He'll probably move the, move the yellow next to the eight ball, and, and everything's, everything's happy day. So it's a good spot, this, just all about this shot. Bit firm. I think he's okay. But he's found a good route here. I think he can just play this one he's closest to next. Drop back a bit. And he's just going away from his work. So you wanna, ideally, you want to play both of these in the left middle and use one of them to nudge that yellow out the way. I mean, you don't have to move the yellow because the ball does go bottom right, so maybe we'll just use that option now. But obviously, if you could move the yellow, it just opens the ball to another pocket. Yeah, he was going away from his work, so... This is tight as well, so it's the third time he's looked at it. He doesn't really want to leave the one bottom right till last unless he can get straight enough that he can leave the eight ball to the left centre. He doesn't want to be flirting around trying to play the eight ball in the bottom right last if he's got to use that other red in the bottom right corner of the table to get there. He may be able to get straight enough on it that he can just drop it in. Although he's he's um, going to use the red in the top of the table last, which is good. I know he's sort of betwixt and between. I think he wanted... I think he's too straight on the red to track up the right-hand side of the table, which is what he'd ideally want. I don't know if he can just cheat the pocket a little bit here and force the cue ball over. He wants to be past the straight on the one at the top of the table, ideally. But, you know, he probably just can't get good on the eight ball. He's just going to have to leave himself a shot. On a club table, you could top this in and come down the left-hand side of the table, but on this, it's just going to throw so wide. It's not really worth trying to. I'll just top it, leave the white somewhere near the bulk line for me. Maybe he's punching across, is he? He's going to whack this. Yeah, good shot. Good shot. It's very straight to do that. He's queued that really well. But again, just that easy power. It's been a good finish, this. Just had to play some shots. Yeah, very neat. He's not really played a cannon either. <laughs> He's found a way to just pick everything's pocket. Found a pocket for every ball when they all look congested. No cannons at all. <laughs> just grab, uh, grab Mark's mic there. So uh, he looks looking a bit confused. Here we go. Grandstand finish. Try and keep this break straight, Phil. Yeah. Fantastic. Makes no sense, does it? You can hit it like that, and then the last one went straight in the right centre. But it's so all or nothing, isn't it? He's done two perfect ones, and the one in between was a disaster. I think yellows are pretty friendly here. Take the two at the top. Try and leave yourself straight enough on this one to bottom left. If he can't, if, he's, if you can see this one to bottom left now, then it's lovely. If not, he's, if the red's just in the way now, he's just got to get somewhere near where the cue ball is in two shots' time. Oh, I think he's on it now, and then, you know. These are lovely. Yeah, just got to 
And wind your work at the top of the table. Make sure you leave yourself some sort of half-decent shot on the eight ball, but not much to do here. And uh, it deserved it, that break. It was uh, so good. Oh, don't want to leave yourself too straight or hampered. Oh, this isn't this isn't good. Yeah, that's careless from where he was. I think he should have just left left the angle. I mean, what's he trying to... He's trying to come down to the bottom cushion there. I think he's got enough that he can sort of get out near the eight ball somewhere. So, yeah. So that's, that's perfect, actually. If he's dead straight here, that's absolutely perfect. Either drop this in. I prefer to drop this in, but a lot of people stun it. But if you stun it, you just you leave yourself a bit straight on the next board rather leave a natural angle or rather drag it. But yeah, he's played that nice. Absolutely perfect angle just to get a bit closer to the eight ball. Oh, this is good stuff from Phil. Good chance to get on the hill. Six five up in this race to seven. Been a very good game, really. I mean, they've this is the best layout of the match so far, but. They've had they've had work to do on every finish. I think Phil didn't really have any work to do in this one. He, any work he did, he gave himself really. He's <laughs> just landing a bit awkward, but played, played some good shots to get out of it. So at some point in this frame, I can't see Stevie clearing up in under a minute. Although he's more than capable, he won't do it unless he had to. Standard break finish on a 30-second shot clock is around about the two-minute mark, two and a half minutes. Easy power again. What's he got to work with? Looks a bit of a smelly opening shot. If you can't see that one, that sort of straight on to the right centre. If you, even then, a couple of tricky reds to do, or three tricky reds to deal with. So you want to be yellows. I think he's just got to play this yellow long. First shot, the one one he's closest to now in the bottom right corner. And there's only really one tricky yellow in it. It goes to the right middle. That's the yellow near the eight ball. And he's got a couple of good balls to kind of land on the left-hand side cushion to make that happen. And then the two at the top would be his last two balls for me. Just got to... He's probably got to play this slow so he's on the one. Oh, yeah, he's on not where he wanted to be, but not a lot he could do about that. So he's got a plan. I don't think this red slide, this yellow slides under the yellow nearest the pocket. So if he's got to play the plan, it's very tricky kind of have to land on the one to right middle next just force the cue ball on off the cushion maybe this goes directly he's looking hard he's playing it direct must be a little sliver of a pocket here yeah bottom jaw first what a shot he used the whole pocket but be happy it's gone still tricky though he wanted to be on that yellow to right middle I mean he is but where, how, where's the cannon how's yeah it's red to the eight was going to be going quite close to the bottom right pocket here. He potted the yellow thin to make sure he didn't pot the eight ball. A clever shot. So much knowledge in that shot. And uh, where he's put the eight balls made his work a lot easier. It's a very, very good visit to the table from Stevie. And now we have gone to 15 seconds. You'll notice the change of pace. Stevie has used his extension. Oh, what's he doing here? Oh, my goodness me. Oh, no. Has he stuck? He's stuck. He's snookered. And that is that shot clock change. We knew it was coming. You could just see the red rock back. What can he see here? He's swerving it, but he's not going to have position. Can't screw this as well. Double. Double to keep your hopes alive. I think it's a double or you're out, Stevie. And it's is it a natural turn on the eight ball? Can he top this through? Does he have to stun it to straighten it? I think he can top it through. So it's just about whether this ball goes in or not. Natural position. Oh, what a shot. He's pulled out two huge doubles in this match as Stevie. You see the little fist clench there as well. Yeah, he wants to repeat the one that goes straight down the middle, not the one that skews off to the right. Yeah, lovely break. He did take a little bit off, but great result. What a chance. I mean, there's work to do, but it's very open. Seems like in a deciding frame, you never get complete roll-ins, but that's about as good as he could have hoped for. Yeah. There's an argument for yellows and reds here. I think that... I think I'd go yellows. I don't think you can play a cannon here. I think you might cannon the red, but... Um, 
the yellow closest to the bottom left or the left hand side bottom rail goes down past the other one so it has a big pocket so you probably move this one now then play the one on the rail next and I'm surprised he's left that there but it's fine good opportunity to move it knowing you're always going to be on the other one with a big pocket there you're always going to be on balls but I mean again it's not a real problem potting that one where it is either so mm. He's going to end up leaving that one at the top till last, which, again, it's not ideal, but he's going to have a shot at the eight ball either way. I'm surprised he's playing this one. This isn't going to check like he hopes. Oh, he's really potted it thin to make that. That's a great shot on here. You have to really pot the ball thin to get the check side to bite. He could have ended up near the eight ball easily there if he caught that a little mill too thick, but he's perfect. Great finish. Yeah, there were different ways he could have taken this, but he's picked out a great route here. Yeah, he's made it harder than he maybe needed to, but like either way, he's backed himself. And even that sort of shot there, he didn't have to. <laughs> he's played at a pace where it could rattle, but he's so confident his potting. I'd have been dropping that in slower just to give the pocket every chance. But yeah, brilliant match. Quality end to a quality match. Both players played their part there. Stevie Dempsey started off well, looked like he was going to run away with it, but all credit to Phil Parkin. Not only hung on in there, but eventually forced that deciding frame and got the job done.